folks, I guess we get paid more to deliver burritos and people. Uh, I'm Christian Peru with the Rideshare Guy, and today we're going to talk about the difference between rideshare and delivery. So the biggest thing when we compare rideshare versus delivery is just the sheer number of companies that you can drive for and deliver for uh, compared to, to rideshare. So when we have rideshare, we have Uber and we have Lyft. Uh, and those are like the biggest players in town. And they certainly have the most business and passengers, the most popular for on-demand work. But you also have Via, Juno, Fasten, and, and, and a couple of smaller players. And they're only in smaller markets. They're not that big yet. When you go to delivery, though, you have Postmates, Caviar, DoorDash, Eat24, Amazon Flex, Favor, Uber Eats, and you know the ones I'm not even thinking of right now. So you know, from a driver's perspective, there's a lot more competition in the delivery game versus rideshare. So um, looking at how pay gets calculated, so the big th difference with delivery is that for the most part, delivery companies don't pay on a time and distance rate card. Now, the big exception to that is Uber Eats, which does pay on the time and distance rate card. In fact, it pays more for Uber Eats time and distance uh, or than than uh, Uber X in most cases. That's kind of funny. Anyhow, the rest of the companies, uh, they pay what, with what's called an effort-based algorithm. And that kind of just is, you know, figuring out the number of items and the difficulty and the estimated amount of time. And they put that into an equation and they figure out how much they're going to offer to pay you per trip. Now, um, you know, there's a lot of fine tuning going on with these and not everyone is created equally. In fact, uh, some of these uh, delivery pay algorithms are drastically better for drivers than others. Um, and, you know, there's just a lot that goes into that. Another exception on delivery is Amazon Flex. Now, Amazon Flex gives you delivery blocks of hours. So maybe you get four hours at $15 an hour each, and then you earn 60 bucks. The cool thing with Flex is if you get that four hour block and you do all your deliveries in two hours, you still get to keep the 60 bucks. The bad thing is if you do it in five hours, then you only get paid 60 bucks. Another big thing with delivery is that delivery drivers earn a lot more in tips than rideshare drivers. Now, looking at rideshare, we go back to that classic base plus time plus distance of each ride equation that's been used in taxi cabs for who knows how long, for a while. Um, and, and this is an example here. You know, if the base is $2 and the per mile rate's $1, um, the per minute's $0.25, cents, obviously I'm using easy math. Um, and you end up driving three miles in 10 minutes, uh, then that's a $2 base plus 10 minutes at 25 cents per mi uh, minute plus three miles at a dollar per mile. And that comes out to a total of 750. So, you know, the pay is a little bit clearer there. You know, even though we have, there's a lot of maybe controversy around upfront pricing, um, you know, we still have the rate cards. We still kind of get paid on this equation. Now, the big thing with rideshare that's that's kind of bigger than delivery is that we have these incentives. So we have things like Quest or Power Driver Bonus, which pay out uh, money based off of you know getting a certain number of rides in. And we have like Boost and Power Zones, which is basically pre-planned surge. And we get some tips every once in a while. Now, one thing that's big with rideshare though is that um, you know rideshare drivers you're going to see a lot more surge in prime time uh, on on rideshare than you will with delivery company's uh, version of that. Now, um, just real quick, we looked at like our top drivers uh, on the blog here, uh, made $24.97 per hour as a rideshare driver in the Bay Area, and then $17.82 per hour uh, as a delivery driver. One thing to keep in mind, though, is that the rideshare driver has a much more expensive car, and they do a lot more dead miles. Whereas if you're doing delivery, you can do it on a bike, on foot, on a scooter, on a motorcycle. Um, and, you know, so your costs can go down a lot, a lot more. You can even do it in an older car. Looking at peak times here, we just put out on this infographic, like the differences in peak time. So obviously in the morning, ride shares, you know, the king, people are going to work. And then sometime around lunch, people order some food. So like you could work uh, ride share in the morning. You can do uh, food for lunch in the afternoon. And then, you know, in the evening, you really just take, pick what you want to do. Uh, and sometimes... You know, ride shares paying more because it, it tends to do so a lot, of, very often. Uh, but, you know, maybe I don't want to deal with passengers or maybe there's a ton of drivers out on a Friday night and I'll switch over to delivery instead. And, you know, we did a little sample shift here of what a good 
uh, you know, schedule could be. So looking at vehicle requirements now, you know, with vehicles, we, for a ride share driver, you need kind of a decent car, a 2001 or newer, four doors, five seat belts, right? With delivery, almost anything goes. You can get an older car, two door car, bike, motorcycle, foot, and that makes it cheaper. It's just easier to kind of deal with. Um, you know, so looking at the pain points here, uh, there's the top three pain points for ride share driving, obviously having strangers looking over your like shoulder. That's something that I don't like, um, because people can be fickle in the way that they rate me, um, extended periods of sitting, you know, you sit a long time as a ride share driver. Um, and then the wear and tear on the vehicle, cause you're driving farther distances as a ride share driver. Now, um, top three pain points for uh, delivery would be smell of food in the car. Now, comparing that smell though to some of my passengers, I don't know. I'd take pizza over whatever that guy smelled like last week. Um, and then, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't cologne. I'll give you that much. Although to certain cats, it might be. So, uh, you know, getting in the buildings as a delivery driver is like kind of hard. You kind of basically have to learn how to break into places um, you know, like these luxury condos and stuff. So, cause your guy's like too lazy to come out and get his food. You know, they don't want to put on pants or whatever. Um, you know, and then dealing with restaurants and parking, you know, as a delivery driver, the hard part really is just like leaving your car out there if your hazards on and running in there and hoping that they have your food ready. If not, then you just hope you don't get a ticket. And the same thing goes when you're trying to get into, you know, Larry's luxury high rise condo apartment that looks like a box um, that he pays 6,000 bucks a month for. So, um, you know, what makes a good rating with a uh, ride share customer service, right? Navigation, having a new car, people like new things. It's not fair. It's just reality. Uh, having a clean car. That's something we have more control over, uh, delivery, you know, you just speed, accuracy, forks, ketchup, you know, Parmesan packets, crushed red pepper, finding your address, making sure the food isn't tossed and turned on the road. Uh, funny story, I once rented a scooter in SF to deliver on and I thought I'd be Evil Knievel and well, yeah, uh, luckily it was Pad Thai, so you know, they didn't notice, I don't think. Anyways, so the big deal difference, the big thing to look at here is that when, you know, there's a lot more competition among delivery companies, but it means that, um, you know, you can find, probably find a company that you like doing delivery for, even if you haven't tried it yet. On top of that, it's bet good, always good to have both options available to you because if Lyft goes down or if Uber deactivates you or whatever, uh, then you can just switch, switch over to delivery. And you may even find that you make more money on delivery because in some cities, you know, the per mileage rate on Uber is 65 cents per mile. Same thing with Lyft, right? That's, that's pretty close to what you get paid for delivery, if not a, a little bit less. So my the big key, key takeaway, try delivery, figure something out that you like, keep your options open, and that gives you power. We release new videos every single week. So make sure you subscribe to our channel and give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. And until next time, try to keep your eyes on the road and your tires on the asphalt.